In this video, I'm going to show you how you could create a static library using Xcode 11. After creating the static library, we will integrate it into an iOS application. Let's say I'm working for a company where we have a service that's accessible through a REST API. Since we have iOS developers who are going to use the service, we thought of creating an SDK for them so that it's easier for them to use the API and we have considered developing a static library. The library we're developing will have a registration and about us screens. The primary project requirement is to make sure that our implementation or source code is not visible to the developers. For the registration screen, the requirements indicate that it cannot be modified by the developer who are going to use the library. So whatever style and branding we set mustn't be modifiable by the library user. While the About Us screen could be customized by the developer, for both screens, we'll be using sib files instead of doing the screen in code. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please click the subscribe button then click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos I upload on this channel. Let me start with creating the static library project. In Xcode's welcome screen, I'm going to create a new project. Then in the template, I will select static library for iOS and then go to the next screen. In this screen, I will define the name of the library. I will call this library Easy Auth. Then for the language, I will make sure Objective C is selected, then create the, la create the library. Right now, we have a couple of files and a reference to the library archive in the product group. Let's head over to the build face tab. And I want to talk about a couple of things. First is the compile sources. Here, you manage the source code you want to be included in the library. The files here, such as this class implementation file, will be compiled into an object file, then archived. Then we have the copy files where you can add more files that you wish to be included in the product directory. The files you add here will simply be copied from the project to the destination product directory. There are times you want to include some resource files or header files, and the copy files is the right place for that. Now I want to add more files into the project. I already prepared the library code and I'm just going to copy them into the project. So I make sure I copy the source files into the project. Okay, remember in the requirements, we need the About Us screen customizable by the developer. How do we make that possible for a sib file? The answer is to add it in the copy files. I'm going to click the plus button and then select the About Us view controller and then add. Whenever the project is built, a copy of the file is copied in the include directory. Okay, so what do we do to prevent a sib file from being modified? What we could do is add it in a bundle. First, we create a new target. We currently do not have a bundle template in the iOS template, so we select the Mac OS tab, and we will find it in the framework and library. I'll select the bundle template and call it resources. So Xcode added the resources group 
Here in the resources group, we will move the sieve files that we want to be protected. I'm going to move the registration and the success view controllers. Okay, let's build the library and build the bundle targets and see what we got. Before building the bundle, I'm going to make sure that I have set the base SDK to iOS in the build settings for the resources bundle. Okay, so in the menu, product, I'm going to select product and then click build. In the keyboard, you can use command B to build uh, this project. And then I'm also going to build the resources bundle and also make sure that the simulator is selected. So I'm going to build it again, uh, build uh, the resources bundle. Okay, I'm going to view the products directory by right clicking the library and select show in finder. Now in the products directory, we have the resource bundle, the archive, and the sieve file in the include folder. If we show the content of the resources bundle, we will find the compiled sieve files or nibs. However, at this moment, it's not there. What we need to do is make sure that the sieve files are included or copied. So I'm going to go back to the project and then under build faces in the copy bundle resources, I'm going to add the two sieve files. I'm going to build the project again and make sure that I have resources selected okay so right now we are we now have the two nib files that were generated when we built the, the bundle i still need to add a couple of methods in the library before we start the integration first i'm going to add the method that will present the registration form I'm going to import first the registration view controller. Then I'm going to create the registration presentation method. In the code, uh, we first locate the resource bundle. Uh, then we create an instance of the registration view controller using the sieve found in the resources bundle. We expect that the resources bundle will be copied into the root project of the client project. That's why we have declared the main bundle then located a bundle called resources. Now I'm going to add the about us presentation method. I'll import first the about us View controller. And then I'm going to add the method to present the about us view controller. Here we are just referencing the main bundle, or in other terms, the app bundle, since we expect that the about us sieve will be copied there by the developer. Next, we will add the interfaces in the header so that the client app can access these methods when they're using the library. I'm going to build this project again so that the changes I made are compiled and added into the archive and our header file is also updated. Then we head over to the products directory and verify that the header is up to date. 
Okay, it looks our library is ready for integration. I've skipped a lot of steps like unit testing and optimization since we are just focusing on building the static library. So the next step in the process is to integrate the library into an existing project I prepared earlier. The iOS project is a simple single view project with a couple of buttons calling the two methods I added previously. Now I'm going to locate the built products, then copy them over to the iOS project. And I'm going to make sure that the copy items if needed is checked. Since we want uh, copies of the files copied over to the project instead of them being referenced. There are a couple of things I want to check before we start writing code. In the build phases, I want to make sure that the link binary with libraries, it has the library referenced. And then in the build settings, under library search path, it is referencing the directory where the library is. Typically, it is automatically generated, but in this case, it's not there. So I'm just going to drag the this group over to the library search path, and I'm just going to double click the library search path row and then drag the folder so that we have a reference to that root directory where our library is and then we should be okay. I'm now going to write some code that's going to use the APIs we created earlier. In view controller, I'm going to import the easy auth header file. And we will create the easy auth property. We're using a property since uh, the auth instance is going to be used in a couple of places. And then we're going to call the presentation of the registration view controller in the registration action. And we'll also do the same thing for the about us action. We will present the about us. And then in the view did load, we will need to create an instance of the auth and set it to the auth property. Okay, I think we're ready to build and test if the integration is going to work. And then I'm just going to click Run. While the app is being built, with Xcode 11, you can now build another kind of code distribution format called XC Framework. In the framework, you can include multiple frameworks for different platforms or architectures. For instance, you want to include an iOS and macOS in one framework or the simulator and the device frameworks. All right, so let's test the integration by clicking the registration button. And I'm going to fill out this form. All right, now I'm going to test the About Us view controller. Okay. So it seems that our integration is working. Uh, let me just open the product di directory of this application and briefly talk about the bundle. So in the products group, I'm going to right click and then show in finder. Then open the package by right clicking and then show package contents. This package is the app's main bundle which is referenced when we're creating an instance of the About Us screen. Then we also have the resource bundle, which sits within this main bundle. So if ever you get in trouble in terms of uh, or having a hard time referencing a file, 
you might want to check the products folder to understand how the app's resources are organized. What I would like to do now is see what kind of errors we will get if we make some changes in the configuration of the integrations. First, I'm going to remove the path in the library search path, then build the application. I'm just going to copy the old path and then remove it and then build the project. Doing this gives us an error. It says that library not found. Since Xcode doesn't know where the archive or to which directory it lives, then it's unable to build the project. I'm going to put it back. Now I'm going to remove the library from the link binary with libraries and see what errors we will get. I'm going to build the app again. Now the error says undefined symbol. That's because it cannot find the library or in other cases the class somehow does not exist. Now I'm going to restore the reference to the library archive and then build the project. Okay, so it's building successfully. In the static library project, I'm going to build the bundle and the static library using a generic device. Then I'm going to locate the new products. I'll use these on the iOS project and replace the older version. First, I'm going to remove the older version. Then add the one that was built against the generic device. And let's just double check that the library search path is there. And then the link binary with libraries is filled with the correct library. And let's test this with running the application and see if it's going to work. Okay, so we got a failure and let's see what errors we got. All right, it says undefined symbol. All right, and then the other warning that we have, it says, Building for iOS simulator um, 8664 means for the simulator, but attempting to link with file built for ARM64. So it means we're building for the simulator, but the static library or library that we have was made for a generic device, or it means for an iPhone, for instance. So we want to make sure that we always use the library or distribute the library for the right uh, destination device. XE framework will come handy in this kind of scenarios and you don't have to switch between binaries when testing for different architectures or platforms. Okay, I think we have covered a lot in this video. And I hope I was able to help you learn or help you with your task of developing the static library you need for your project. Please take a moment to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button below, then enable notifications to get notified of new videos.